Good morning, students. So, hope you are following me and learning the questions, right? Okay. So, the previous chapter, we have discussed about this morphology and this anatomy of one of these vertebrate and two invertebrates, fine? Okay. So, today we are supposed to begin one new chapter, chapter 5, that is digestion and absorption, which is belong to, belongs to unit 3, right? The topic is digestion and absorption, right? So, in this chapter, we are supposed to discuss the digestion as well as the absorption process of this human being, right? Okay. So, here we have to discuss about this. First, we have to discuss this anatomical feature of this digestive system. Of course, what do you mean anatomy? The internal structure, right? So, the internal structure of this digestive system and absorption process and the digestion process. And finally, we will look into this, you know, certain diseases and disorders which is related to this digestive system. Fine. So, these are the things we are going to discuss in this chapter. Fine. Okay. So, anyhow, let us move on to the topics. So, first let us discuss what do you mean digestion? Or what is the need of this taking food? Right. So, of course, after taking the food, only the digestion process is going on. Right. So, what is the need of this taking food? Of course, everyone knows the food is giving energy to the body, right? And the food is useful for this building up of the body parts, right? Then it is useful to damage this, you know, repair the damaged tissues, right? And this is coordinating uh, this body functions. For this, all those processes, of course, the food will be, you know, very helpful, right? Okay. So, human beings are depending this external environment, especially we could say we are depending this in you know, the plants and animals for our food source, right? So when we get the food from outside, this food will be in the form of this macromolecules. Whatever food we take, whatever food we take, so the food is in the form of this complex of macromolecules, right? So whatever food we take, it consists of certain basic nutrients. Could you see what are the basic nutrients will be there in the food? So, of course, the carbohydrates, right? Carbohydrate. So, carbohydrate will be there, right? Then, protein. So, the food consists of this protein, right? Then, the food consists of this fat or lipid. Then, vitamins. So, the food consists of the vitamins, minerals, minerals. Then, fiber, fiber. Water. So these are the major nutrients, organic nutrients. So organic nutrients which is present in the food, whatever we take. So of course uh, we are depending the external environment for our food, right? So these are the basic component which is present in the food. So this food is, uh, if we take carbohydrate or protein or lipid, it will be as a macromolecule of form. So it is, it will be as a macromolecule. So this, Ma molecules will be as the biggest molecules. So it is bigger than the cells. So the cells are very smaller in very it is microscopic, right? So cells are very smaller than these molecules which we consume. Understand? That's why these cells cannot absorb this macromolecule. So it cannot utilize these macromolecules to convert into energy. Right? That's why this macromolecule must be converted in the simplest molecules. Understand? So if it is in the simplest form, these cells can utilize this easily and it, this rest of the process can be done by the cells. Have we got? So that's why this, that is the process we can say. So the macromolecule must be converted in the simplest molecules. Have we got? And finally, it will be utilized by the cells to convert into you know, various things such as the energy and, and so on, right? Have you got? So, this process is known as a digestion, right? So, the macromolecule is becoming as a simplest molecule. That process is known as a digestion. For this process, one digestive system is involved, helping, right? So, what do you mean system? Of course, one system may consist of the several organs, right? So, digestive system is very familiar one. Of course, everyone knows that we have learned in the lower classes in so many, you know, grades, right? So, here... So, the, this process, this digestion process is done by this digestive system. So, the overall system is helping for this digestion process. That is the digestive system. Understand? 
can you see what are this and you know, organs are there in this digestive system what are the organs will be there in the digestive system the human digestive system of course the human digestive system consists of one long alimentary canal right so this alimentary canal begins with mouth and it end with anus right okay so then what are these organs R rest of these organs are associated with this one so the organs so organs of digestive system what are the organs will be there of course it begins with mouth okay mouth then it leads to buccal cavity buccal cavity right then it leads to pharynx it leads to pharynx pharynx leads to esophagus right pharynx leads to esophagus then esophagus leads to stomach esophagus leads to stomach stomach leads to small intestine small intestine right then small intestine leads to large intestine large intestine the large intestine leads to rectum and the rectum leads to anus so these all the organs are involved in this digestive system have we got okay and certain gland cells are associated with this digestion process that is we could say it is you know salivary gland salivary gland liver as well as pancreas liver as well as pancreas so these all all the organs are involved in this digestive system and everything is doing the similar function that is digestion okay so this chapter we are going to discuss about this this first of all we got to discuss about this anatomy of this each organ what about the mouth buccal cavity pharynx esophagus so first we we, got, we are going to discuss about this anatomy of this each organs and we will move into this you know digestion process i mean the physiology how the digestion takes place in this digestive system to convert this macro molecule into simplest molecule have we got okay and finally we will look into this again you know disorders which is related to the digestive system okay then let us see the digestive process includes so the digestion process so the digestion process includes what are the steps so what are the steps are involved in this digestion process so first they say it is an ingestion ingestion what do you mean ingestion of course the first step for digestion is intake of food so intake of food right ingestion the second process is digestion digestion so there is a second process after the intake of the food the food will be digested which means the macro molecule is converted in the simplest molecule have you got okay then absorption absorption after digestion it should be absorbed and it should be circulated through the blood circulation right this is absorption then assimilation 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 in the sense you know after reaching the cells the cells will utilize these substances to convert it into energy so that process is known as this assimilation right after assimilation so this you know undigested waste materials undigested waste materials must be eliminated right it should be sent off that process is known as this addition that process is known as addition so the digestion process takes place as a five steps so the digestion process is going on as a five steps that is ingestion digestion absorption assimilation digestion okay so this is going on as a five steps so these all these cyst or all these organs are the total you know uh, digestive systems is doing its five functions have we got now let us see how this you know uh, digestion process is going on before that we can look into this the structure or this internal structure of this organs which is present in this digestive system do you understand fine so now let us begin with the structure of this digestive system right so the structure of this digestive system of course the digestive system begins with this mouth right so it begins with mouth right So the mouth consists of this upper lip as well as the lower lip, right? This is useful to the intake of food. Okay. Then this mouth is leading into this buccal cavity. So the let's we can say as buccal cavity, buccal cavity. Okay. And this buccal cavity, the buccal cavity, our oral cavity, consists of what are the regions? 
of course it consists of this you know upper jaw lower jaw upper jaw then lower jaw upper jaw lower jaw then it consists of the teeth so this teeth are arranged in this upper jaw as well as so, right fine then it consists of this long and muscular tongue right then it is it consists of the salivary glands salivary glands right so this mouth is reading in the buccal cavity buccal cavity consists of upper jaw lower jaw and the jaws are arranged with this several teeth then it consists of the long and muscular tongue then there is this salivary glands okay so the as we said the first process is ingestion five processes we said they give me the first process is ingestion so the mouth is involving in this ingestion process with the help of this mouth and with the help of this tongue we are taking the food inside right then mechanical digestion mechanical digestion not chemical digestion mechanical digestion begins in this mouth or buccal cavity with the help of this tongue with the help of this you know uh, upper jaw lower jaw teeth and with the help of this saliva so all with all those things the mechanical digestion first begins in this buccal cavity have we got okay then next the chemical digestion started with the help of the secretion from the salivary glands the salivary gland is secreting the saliva so the saliva consists of the enzymes with the help of this enzymes this chemical digestion begins so that we will learn later right just we are going to learn about the structure now have we got okay and uh, suppose we can look into this you know upper jaw and the lower jaw and the teeth arrangement in this jaws understand okay so listen so upper jaw and the lower jaw we can draw now right so upper jaw and the lower jaw and in this teeth in this jaw the teeth are socketed inside this jaw am i right so the teeth is socketed inside for example if it is a gum it's a gum region right in this gum region this teeth is socketed inside teeth is socketed inside right so the teeth is socketed inside this jaw so this is a gum region so this is teeth so right so this type of this arrangement is called tichodont tichodont so the human dentition is tichodont type what do you mean tichodont each and every individual tooth is kept or socketed inside this bone of this jaw or we can say the gum region in this gum region it is socketed in so this type of arrangement is called as tichodont condition okay then as we and we know already about this teeth arrangement for in most of this man this especially in human beings also there is two set of this teeth is we know right when we were small we had one set of the teeth and it was fall down then we are we got this new set of teeth right so there is two set of teeth will be found for this mammals and human beings also since it is two set this is known as a diphodont condition diphodont 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 condition di means two okay so what are the two set of teeth the one is the permanent uh, sorry first temporary teeth temporary teeth then permanent teeth permanent teeth right so the temporary teeth number is 20 and the permanent teeth number is 32 right since there is two set of teeth is formed this is known as a diphodont teeth right then one more definition also the term also they say there is and here four different types of teeth is there so permanent teeth also there is four different types of teeth is there since there is four different types of teeth is there this is known as a heterodont type heterodont type heterodont type what do you mean heterodont there is four different types of teeth is that's why it is known as a heterodont could you say what are the four different types of teeth incisor canine premolar premolar and molar so this is a four different types of teeth fine now let us see where other it is located in this jaw okay so first we can say incisor 
is totally h okay so it is this is expressly useful for adjacent drawing so right so incisor is mainly used for cutting purpose so incisor number overall number is h right and the second one is you know canine canine is a sharp teeth okay so each side one so here two here two so overall the canine is four canine is four right and the premolar is either side it is two two so here two here two right this is premolar okay two and two so overall we can say two four six eight so it comes to eight right and this molar molar is either side it is three okay three three each side so three in each sides okay so here the overall overall number of this the molar is 3 6 9 and 12 can you count this overall number is 32 okay and but here the dental formula dental formula is given as i show the arrangement of this teeth is if you see as right side and the left side the arrangement of teeth will be as is you know like a mirror image if you see if you divide as is right side and left side it will be like a mirror image right this is reflected like here understand that is why this arrangement is there as per this arrangement they have given this dental formula so the dental formula is listen so incisor is mentioned as i and canine is mentioned as c then premolar is mentioned as p molar is mentioned as m so i c p m this dental formula number is so in one side how much is the incisor is incisor is 2 right and uh, canine is 1 premolar is 2 and molar is 3 so the formula is the same in the lower side also am i right that's why they can mention 2 by 2 by 2 1 by 1 2 by 2 3 by 3 and the same is reflected here also the same arrangement is here also that's why they mention it this is into 2 right so one side here it is 2 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 right so 2 by 2 1 by 1 2 by 2 3 by 3 the same is present in this opposite side also so it will show this is a dental form understand okay now let's are as we said already so in this gum region only each teeth is located is right so it is that condition only we said it's a stichodon cancer in certain cases what happens certain minerals like calcium calcium and magnesium calcium and calcium and magnesium is to deposit is to deposit on this you know uppermost or this is covering of this tooth then it will form as one hard layer it will form as one hard layer the calcium and magnesium will deposit on this on this upper surface of this tooth so this will form as a hard layer the hard layer is called tartar or it is known as scapulus tartar or scapulus so this will actually when it is formed during brushing it should be removed periodically right so we have to wash it and we have to clean it if it is not cleaned properly what happens this will form as a plaque inside this will form as a plaque plaque formation okay so which means this is it will you know form a, along with this as a bacteria and also on along with the space and the bacteria it will form as one plaque that is known as a plaque the plaque formation happens right so gradually what happens this plaque it leads you know it would leads into between this gum and this you know enamel of the teeth the outermost teeth is known as the enamel it is covered with the enamel so uh, just imagine this is located inside so this you know this plaque will form between this gum gum region and enamel of the teeth 
So what happened? And it started to, you know, remove from this gum part. Have you got? It will remove it because there is a layer between these two. So it started to remove from the gum. Moreover, it leads to inflammation, infection and irritation, bleeding will be there. So these are all these problems which causes. Understand? So that disease is known as gingivitis. Gingivitis. Okay? So that is about this. And uh, buccal cavity. And especially in the buccal cavity, we talk about this stroke now. Have we got? And now let us move on this. A tongue. So the buccal region consists of this tongue. The next part is, so we talk about this uh, jaws as well as this teeth and next we can go on this tongue. Of course we know since the tongue is one of the largest muscular organ, right? And it is attached to the anterior end and the posterior end region is there. So the anterior region as well as the posterior region is there, right? And this, if you see, this is the anterior region. This is the anterior region and this is the posterior region. So this anterior region is free and the posterior region is attached. Have we got? Anterior region will be free and the posterior region is attached with the help of this, you know, muscle that is known as a frenulum. That is known as a frenulum. With the help of this frenulum, this posterior region of the tongue is attached on the floor of this buccal cavity. Understand? And on this, on this tongue, it consists of this small projections right small projections so the small projections will be on this tongue with the with the you know taste buds it comes to this taste process so with the taste buds so this projection is known as a papillae this projection is known as papillae understand okay so that's all about this a salivary gland will be involved in this digestion process that we will learn later during this uh, physiology digestion process. Have we got? So now we have you know, completed about the uh, structure of this buccal cavity that is the subcortical layer and teeth and lymph and this tongue. Understand? And what is the function of this tongue? Of course, tongue is useful to you know get the food and it is useful for grinding the food along with the saliva and subcortical layer along along the teeth, right? Then it is useful to swallow the food. Then it is function as this, you know, one of this organ for speech. Understand? So now let us go for the next part. After it, after buccal cavity, it is leading to facts. Understand? So now let us begin with the next region that is pharynx, right? So first we talk about this mouth. So then we talk about this buccal cavity, right? And next region it is leading to pharynx. Right? So pharynx. Where is the pharynx? The pharynx is the formal part for this respiratory system as well as this digestive system. So which means we done. You draw this. Okay. So this is a nostril. Nostril. And this mouth. So nostril is leading to, you know, nasal cavity. So nostril is leading to nasal cavity, right? And this mouth is leading to buccal cavity, right? Buccal cavity. And both opens into the common part. This is known as a pharynx. Pharynx. Understand? So here this air is to come. From this buccal cavity, this small food is to come. So both is you know meeting in this common part that is known as the pharynx. Understand? And in this pharynx region only, I get two tubes are. What are the two tubes? The and next region of this digestive system one is this esophagus, right? So after pharynx, esophagus. So esophagus is to arise. And the respiratory tract also is twice. So what is the respiratory tract next to you? This is trachea. So the trachea tube as well as the esophagus. So this the next tube is known as esophagus. Esophagus is twice. Okay. And since we are focusing the digestive system, I will draw the esophagus here. But in the same region, in the thoracic region, tracheal tube also there. Right. So if you draw the tracheal tube, so the tracheal tube also is twice from here. Right. So the tracheal tube as well as the esophagus. Both use to arise. 
Okay. So this one opening. So this is the esophagus. So one opening is there in the esophagus, and meanwhile one opening is there in the trachea tube also. Okay. So the opening of this esophagus is known as gullet. Gullet. Meanwhile, the opening of this trachea tube is known as glottis. Glottis. Okay. Since it is common for for uh, respiratory as well as the digestive system, air also has to come, food also has to come. So when we swallow the food, the food must to leads in the direct path or correct path is the esophagus. So when it is moved to the esophagus, the should the food must not enter into the tracheal tube, right? That's why the above this uh, opening, one cartilaginous flap or one flap will be there, or the cartilaginous muscular. You know, uh, flap will be there. That is known as as epiglottis. Epiglottis. So this epiglottis will close this tracheal tube when we swallow the food. Understand? And this gullet region opens, so the food will directly move into this esophagus. Have you got? Okay. Then moreover, in this part, they say it consists of some you know mass of lymphoidal tissue also it consists of some mass of lymphoidal tissue so it consists of some mass of lymphoidal tissue so this mass of lymphoidal tissue is known as tonsils tonsils this is involved in this immunity function understand so the so about this pharynx region so the pharynx is leading to the next part is known as the esophagus okay okay then so this esophagus is ends with this The large muscular part is known as the stomach. Understand? It leads into this stomach. Have you got? And at this junction, where this esophagus is connected to this stomach, it consists of one one muscle, one muscle. That muscle is known as cardio cardio sphincter muscle. Cardio sphincter muscle. Cardio sphincter muscle. Right. Hey. So listen. What is the role of this esophagus? So esophagus is passing the food, partially grinded food, from this mouth or buccal cavity to the stomach region. In the stomach, the natural digestion process is being right. So there is the role of this esophagus. It's one of the large muscle. I'm sorry. And narrow tube, right? Okay. And at this end, it constructs this cardiac sphincter muscle. This used to contract and relax. By the contraction of uh, this muscle only, this for partially digested food will pass into the next region, the stomach. Have we got? Okay. And the stomach again, it consists of gastric glands as well as the hydrochloric acid also. Gastric glands as well as this hydrochloric acid and gastric glands. Gastric juices. Gastric gland is secreting and gastric juices. So both is there in this uh, stomach region. So when the food comes to the stomach, the food will be digested with the help of this hydrochloric acid as well as this, you know, gastric juices. So how it will be digested and what chemical process is going on that we will learn later, right? So now we can see the structure of it. So it will be digested here. In case, in case if this cardiac sphincter muscle is do not contract properly. This partially digested food will backflow again through this esophagus. So then, when it come back, come, come back again, since there is a hydrochloric acid, there will be one burning sense will be there in this chest region. That is known as a hard burn. Hard burn. Do you get me? Okay. So this disorder is known as as G E O D, which means gastro esophageal. Reflex disorder. It is reflexing that. So reflex re disorder. Have you got this also? One of this important question. So what is the? So what is the reason? When this cardiac sphincter muscle is not contract properly, the partially digested food is sending backward. So that condition is called it is uh, G R D. This uh, the symptom is heart burn. Have you got? Okay. And we can come. So that is all about this esophagus, right? Then we can come to this next region, a stomach. Next region is stomach. Are you following me? Okay. So stomach also consists of the three regions. So the part where it is connected with the esophagus, this region, is known as this cardiac region. Cardiac region. Okay. And the central region, large region, this is known as this 
fundic region. Fundic region. Okay. And this end part where it is connected to this iso, uh, sorry, duodenum, small intestine. So this region is known as the pyloric region. Pyloric region. Okay. So cardiac region, fundic region as well as the pyloric region. So what is the role of the stomach? In the stomach, the food will be stored temporarily. Meanwhile, this stomach consists of this gastric glands and it is secreting these gastric juices. And meanwhile, it is producing the hydrochloric acid also. So those things is helpful for the digestion of the food, right? After digestion, this, uh, the food becomes it's a chyme. So the chyme will be transported to the next region, the sub sorry, in the small intestine. Now the rest of this digestion and the absorption process is going, right? And at this end of this five, uh, uh, stomach region, it consists of another one muscle. Have you noticed? This muscle is known as this. This is cardiac sphincter muscle and this end of this region also consists of this muscle which is regulating this passing of the food to this next part is this in the stem. So this sphincter muscle is known as this pyloric sphincter muscle. Pyloric sphincter muscle. Understand? So this, by the contraction of this pyloric sphincter muscle, the food is moving towards this next region. It is a small intestine. Have we got? Okay. And the one more part is there in this stomach. That is this. It consists of some muscular fold. And the wall of this stomach consists of some muscular fold. So this muscular fold will enlarge when the food is moving towards the stomach. So this will, when it's enlarged, the stomach can accommodate large amount of food. So this folding is known as a rugae. Rugae. Right? So this is helpful to accommodate this large amount of food inside this stomach. Right? So we have completed this one. Mouth in this alimentary canal, the first part mouth over and this is going to buccal cavity we discussed. Then the pharynx region, right? It's a pharynx region. Then esophagus region as well as the stomach region. Then finally it is leading towards this small intestine, then large intestine, finally the rectum and hands. Okay, have we got? Okay, let us see the next part. It is small intestine, right? So the next one is the small intestine. Small intestine. So the stomach is leading to small intestine. And the small intestine is the largest part in the sedimentary canal. So the small intestine is divided as three divisions. So the beginning is duodenum. Duodenum. And the central region is this jejunum, jejunum, and the end region is this ileum. Okay, so duodenum is a short tube which is connected to the muscle and uh, stomach region that is 25 centimeter in length, 25 centimeter in length, and jejunum 2.5 meter in length, and ileum is the largest region, uh, lengthiest region that is the 3.5 meter in length. Okay. So it's a long coiled tube, it is starting from the stomach. So from the stomach, this is duodenum region you could see, and then it is passing as a long coiled tube. Okay. Okay. Then it commences as a long in the stem. Commences as a loginus. Okay. So loginus time. Okay, Lisa. So the first is a small in the strength. Small in the strength is divided into three divisions. Diodinum, jejunum, as well as the cilia, right? So, diodinum is the shortest tube, which is connected to this stomach region with the help of this pyloric sphincter muscle. Am I right? Okay. Then, this diodinum part actually is connected to this, you know, this glands, large district glands is known as the liver and pancreas. So, the liver and pancreas secretion is led into this diodinum region. Okay. And the next region, so the diodinum consists of some glands that is known as Bruno's gland. Brunus gland. So this Brunus gland is secreting mucous substances in this duodenum region. Have we got? Okay. So duodenum region. This is duodenum. Okay. And the next part is the coiled part is known as the jejunum region. And the end of this region is known as the 
helium part okay and this helium part consists of some specific structure that is known as small finger like projections minute projections that is known as as villi so it consists of small finger like projection inside this jejunum regions that is known as as that is known as as villi so this is known as as villi okay small minute projections are there that is known as villi and this villi consists of again some broad brush border like appearance of this small minute villi again this is giving as a brush border appearance this minute villi is known as a micro villi micro villi have you got villi and micro villi so partially digested food almost partially digested food is passing through the duodenum in this intestinal region so the rest of this digestion and the final digestion takes place in the small intestine region right and the absorption process when the digestion is over of course the digested nutrients has to be taken to this circulatory system to supply to the cells right so final absorption process is taking more it takes place in this helium region where this microvilli is present understand our villi is present microvilli is present this will absorb this nutrients and pass it to this circulatory system right so along with this villi this helium region consists of villi along with the helium region it consists of gobbler cells villi is there again consists of gobbler cells this gobbler cells be remember it is secreting mucus substance there, right again it consists of some a uh, group of lymphoidal tissue group of a mass of lymphoidal tissue this is producing the lymphocytes the tissue is known as payas patches payas patches so this three is present in this helium region have we got so this three is present in helium region this payas patches is producing lymphocytes lymphocytes this is involving this immunity process have we got okay so this is present in this helium region and finally this helium is leading to this next region of this larval intestine have we got okay and listen and in this villi so villi consists of um, uh, some all you know projections will be there in this way so between this villi there will be some depressions so this depressed part is known as so this depressed part is known as as in a crypts of crypts of leberkin crypts of leberkin so the gap between the two villi there is some depression right so that depression is known as crypts of leberkin have you got okay so now so small intestine region is over the process we will discuss it right then it is leading towards this large intestine right large intestine so the large intestine also divides us on the four regions the first part is cecum cecum colon rectum so three regions cecum colon and rectum so this part so this part is known as a cecum okay this rest of this regions this full from here to here it is known as a colon right and this part is known as a rectum Have you got? Okay. Now listen. This colon is again divided as, you know. So this is the colon region. This colon is divided as again, you know. Listen. Colon is again divided as ascending colon, ascending colon. So this is moving upwards. So it is known as ascending colon. Then the next region is this transverse colon. transverse colon then the next region is this is transverse colon next region is descending colon so this is known as again the next one is this descending colon and the final one that there is a curve that is known as sigmoid colon the next one is this sigmoid colon okay and the sigmoid colon you know what one is rectum is okay so let's up so this colon is again divided as ascending colon ascending colon transverse colon descending colon as well as a sigmoid colon okay then in this column region where this large intestine begins 
it consists of one small finger like position outgrowth so this finger like outgrowth is known as this vermi for vermi for appendix vermi for appendix so commonly we used to call as appendix region right so it is known as vermi for appendix and especially this cecum region so this cecum this is a cecum region right so this cecum region yeah this cecum region only this progression is there that is known as vermi for appendix so this cecum region and this vermi for appendix region is larger for this herbivorous animals herbivorous animals herbivorous animals means which is to take this in the plants it consists of lot of cellulose so this mainly this part is helpful for the digestion of the cellulose and so that's why for herbivorous animals this will be enlarged but for this mammals this reduced have we got okay. so now is that after this digestion process the nutrients is taken by the small intestine with the help of this villi and undigested waste materials okay fecus mucus is coming through this large intestine region so first it comes in the cecum part then colon region finally into the sigmoid colon then it is left into this rectum region understand and this in this rectum this fecus matter will be temporarily stored then it will be sent out to this the next opening it is called anus anus region. so in this anus region also after this large intestine it consists of this now after large intestine it consists of rectum and finally anus have we got anus also consists of this two you know sphincter muscles external as well as cis internal so two sphincter muscles sphincter muscle is there as i said already sphincter muscle is used for contraction contraction and relaxation so it will push this substance to the next region so here also so it is this sphincter muscle is helpful to eliminate this fecal substances have we got okay. and in this anal region it consists of a lot of you know and arteries and veins supply will be there so that is known as a colon colon so the, if this colon is enlarged if this colon is enlarged in certain cases it leads to pipes or it is known as a hemorrhoids hemorrhoids piles or hemorrhoids the reason is here this there is this column is there which means column means there is a supply of this artery blood supply artery and the vein supply will be there in this body if this vein or column is enlarged in cases in certain cases it leads to pile formation okay so that is known otherwise known as this hemorrhoid cells have we got so that's all about this alimentary canal so alimentary canal begins with mouth and the end with this rectum i'm oh, sorry anus which understand so listen students so before we meet in the next class so try to complete the portions which we completed today right and especially you have to go for this what are the processes is there in the digestion right and the five processes ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and digestion then the structure of the alimentary canal each part is important so that we can say so what are the regions are there in the buccal cavity when they ask about the buccal cavity you have to write about this teeth arrangement tongue and on so on right so those arrangement we have to say in the teeth also what is thicker on heterodon and what is you know diphodon conditions those things you can learn as either two mark or three mark questions those things you learn and this defect in this gum region there is gingivitis that you can learn as two mark question or three mark question and this tongue is attached to the floor of this mouth with the help of buccal cavity the help of the frenulum so these are all this one mark questions you underline then we can go for this you know and the pharynx region what is there in the pharynx region then what is there in the esophagus then what is gerd g e r d gerd that we can learn and structure of the stomach that is this is either five mark question or three mark question then small intestine divisions of small intestine you know what is uh, length of the small intestine and so on what are the, the things is there in this you know ileum part of the small intestine that we can learn as a five mark question so separately also it will be asked okay then what is vermiform appendix that is a smallest part and why it is present in this uh, largest as uh, herbivores why it is it is it is large in the happy was because it is useful for the digestion of the cellulose okay that we can learn then what is piles what is the reason for this piles are hemorrhoids so that we can learn. okay so these are this um, some highlighted part i said that you can cover before we meet in the next class fine 
चलो डस्टबिन ट्रीट करते हैं नेक्स्ट थैंक यू